everybody. We are back in business here, I hope. Sorry about that. We use a uh, wireless camera transmitter from our smart remote, and of course, even though it showed 80% battery, it was not anywhere near that. So we've got a fresh one. If this happens again, well, just uh, just leave some emojis. Give us an emoji story. Give us Express yourself with emojis about how you feel about all of this. So. Uh, for those of you that are uh, just now joining us, we had a little bit of a snafu earlier. We were mid-flight and our camera transmitter died. The aircraft is golden, as you can tell. Everything looks great. Uh, so we are still live. We're going to go back up and essentially, for those of you that are uh, tuning back in, we're going to go back live. We're going to go back up in the air. Uh, we'll do our takeoff sequence again. I'll let you guys see that FPV view uh, right here. And we'll do another takeoff and then uh, get right back on subject here. So we're going to take off real quick. Like I said before, same, uh, same pattern that everybody's used to, down and in on your remote. So we're going to go ahead and lift off. Take off. And you're going to hear the drone in the background, so give us just a second. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. All right. We are back in the air, back in business here, kids. All you cool cats and kittens out there. I'm going to go ahead and get back on subject just for those of you that were, uh, were looking earlier. We want to make sure we give you guys a good experience. We're going to flip back over to the H20T by tapping in the bottom right corner. That corner is where it's your primary gimbal. In this case, again, we are in single gimbal mode. All M300 RTKs, as of right now and probably in the future, are only going to ship with a single downward gimbal. You do have to buy that dual downward gimbal connector separately. And we are on subject. So, as I was saying before, before I was really interrupted by technology, not the drone, the drone's been great. Uh, we are right now on the zoom camera, as indicated on the top there, you'll see that green rectangle that says zoom 2x, just indicating which sensor we're looking at. We are looking uh, at the zoom feed and we are at a 2x zoom. This is a 23x optical zoom camera, so we're uh, basically not zoomed in at all. Uh, one cool thing that I'll just show again in case you guys didn't catch it before, we can go to our wide camera. This is our wide view, just to give you some perspective. Now you'll notice that green, uh, you've got those white crosshairs. Again, everybody calm down. We're not, we're not military here. So the thing isn't armed, everything's fine. But right in those crosshairs uh, is your subject. That's sort of your, your, your point of interest. No AI happening in this current example, but that is your subject. Now that green, that wider green rectangle there uh, looks almost like, a, you know, like you're looking through an old school video camera, for example. Um, that's essentially setting your zoom for when you back over to zoom. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm gonna kind of speed through this since we did it before. So we're now at 10x, we're gonna go to 20, and let's go ahead and go to 40x and see what happens. Now, you'll notice that only that green rectangle change, that's setting our zoom view. So when I tap zoom on the left side of my screen here, it automatically is set to 40x. Because the H20T has those two different visual spectrum cameras, one is zoom, one is wide, because they're physically different lenses, different cameras, different sensors, you're able to set that zoom uh, sort of while you're not even looking at it, basically. You're just changing that, that field of view, and that way, while I get back on target here, we're gonna go wide, and we're right back to where we were. For those of you in public safety, surveying, if you're flying in a congested area, whatever it might be, you're able to get that immediate wide view of your scene by just tapping wide, but you're not actually changing that zoom angle, which is fantastic. You're able to get right back on subject. This is not something we've been able to do before, because like, for example, with a Z30, you only had one camera. So if you want to reset, you hit that R in the bottom. Anybody that has a Z30 knows what I'm talking about. It zooms all the way back out. And then you got to find your subject again, zoom in. In this case, you've got two different cameras. So I am at 40X. Hey guys, I'm uh, being told people are complaining about a beeping. I, uh, I honestly, uh, oh, I'll tell you what, I'll bet you. Let's see if you guys are, you might be getting audio through our, uh, yep, I can fix that. I'll bet you. All right, it's going to take a second to update, guys. Let me know if that goes away. So that beeping that you heard is actually the obstacle avoidance alerting system. Now I had it muted. So again, I've got uh, Mr. Bradley Smith here is at the Facebook controls. Let me know what's going on. 
And we've got one, Vladimir Goforth, the white Russian, as he's known on the streets, standing by in case we need backup. Brad, if you'll just let me know when people are saying we're good on the beeping. Do you hear it anymore? I'm not hearing it anymore. Okay, great. Sorry about that, guys. So basically, uh, I'll just explain that. While uh, I'm just going to say that was intentional. You guys are welcome. Here's a lesson. So we have an obstacle avoidance system on this aircraft that has six directions, up, down, left, right, forward, and back. You can set an alerting distance, which is the distance at which you want it to beep annoyingly over your Facebook live stream while you're already sweaty because it's warm and you're on stage, essentially. That's the alerting distance. You also have a braking distance. So you could say, uh, let's say you want it to alert you at 75 feet away from an object laterally, horizontally, but you want it to break at 10 feet. That's what those settings are for. Uh, the alerting can be kind of annoying, so I would recommend muting that. You know, if you're going to do any sort of Facebook live streams, whatever you're into, uh, mute that ahead of time. All right. So back on subject here, we are in our zoom camera. We're at 20x. Now, this is a 23x optical camera. This is what I was saying before the uh, transmitter died last time. I'm going to go ahead and point down here at a more interesting subject like these transformers. And let's say, you know, gosh, that looks like 26902 on the left-hand side. How about we zoom in a little bit more just to make sure. Now, we are, right now, we're maxed out. We're at 22.8 optical, but I can slide right past that and go to digital. So we now, at, we now are at digital zoom. I'm yawing the aircraft there, which is why you see the, the jerky motion. That's me. And we're going to just drag up. Let's just go for it. We're at 40x. So now we've confirmed that is 26902. Uh, this is a Swepco pole. So uh, Swepco, if you're watching, this thing looks fantastic. It's beautiful. Great color. Everything looks fantastic. I don't see any issues here. If you guys see issues, then just please don't say anything in the comments. So you're at 40x. Now you can go way beyond that if you want to. I'm just going to pretend like I want to see what's in here. We are now at a, this is maxed out. So we're at 200x total. So that's optical and digital. Now what's really neat is if you want to see how far away this subject is, you tap the RNG. Our laser rangefinder is now enabled. And we can see that that structure is approximately 238 feet from the aircraft. It also gives you an approximate altitude of that subject. So this pole is approximately 41 feet off the ground. And the out I'm stepping outside, so if the audio gets poor, that's my fault. My apologies. It's about 41 feet off the ground, and it's 237, 237 feet away from our aircraft. I'm going to go ahead and back back out just so if any of you guys have not had your drama mean today, you're not going to be hurting. So we're zoomed back out. Now, real quick, let's talk about, there we go. So. Let's say I am a public safety agency and I'm interested, I'm, I'm finding, I'm trying to find a vehicle. There's a subject vehicle. We want to see uh, where he's going, what he's doing, what he or she is doing, whatever. There is in the uh, top left here, right above in-flight GPS, there's a little uh, circular crosshair. We're going to tap on that. Now that is starting Smart Track. So Smart Track is essentially like Active Track, just on steroids. So you're going to see these yellow circles bouncing around. So the AI is trying to determine, hey, what subject would this guy be interested in seeing? Well, this guy's interested in seeing this maroon car right here. Now, if you happen to be in that maroon car and you're seeing this live, just put the phone down, okay? I'm not trying to spy on you, but don't Facebook and drive. That's just, that's just irresponsible. Now, you notice the zoom is automatically moving. It did lose the target there behind the Pizza Hut sign, but it is gonna continue to track it until it loses it. Now, we do have some buildings coming up here that's gonna occlude it. Let's see what happens. It lost it, but you see that dot, so it's got a projected path. Oh, and then the trees, see? So there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop Smart Track, which is just by pressing that circular crosshair again. So what you notice there is I tapped a vehicle of interest. That ve I don't know who that is. It doesn't, it, the, the, the drone doesn't know who that is, but I wanted to see where that vehicle was going. I wanted to track it, maybe uh, judge the range, whatever it might be. You were able to tap on that circle and it actually tracked it. Now, when it lost that subject, it, it had a projected path. That was that little green circle that you saw kind of bouncing all over the place. Now, one thing, look, I, I will not blow smoke. Anybody that knows me, this thing does not know that that was a burgundy Honda Pilot. So it's going to just look for any pixels that might be the similar color, moving in a similar direction, moving at a similar speed, whatever. And it's going to bounce around. So let's see what happens. Let me get back over here. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit so we're not as zoomed in. We're gonna go back over here to that intersection. Just for those of you guys in the area, this is at the corner of College and Sycamore. I'm flying above our shop right now. Class E airspace, everyone. Everybody calm down. 
I do have our beacons on, as you'll see in the top left there, that light bulb that's blue, that means the beacons are activated. I'm gonna go and activate Smart Track, and let's see if we can snag one of these guys while they're moving. There we go. We've got a white pickup truck. Now I am not doing, my hands are, I wish I had another camera, but uh, as you can tell, our video transmitters are just not cooperating. I am not touching anything. The drone is doing this 100% by itself, including the zoom level. I could manually change that zoom level if I wanted to, but I like to let it do its thing. It's got its own algorithms. You're gonna see it go blue. Now that green dot, that's the projected path of the subject and then the trees. So we're at a little bit of a detriment there, but as you can see, it tracks it incredibly well. Uh, again, I was not doing any input there whatsoever. And I will warn you, it is addicting to play with this, but I'm gonna bounce back out and we're gonna go over to the infrared. So let's bounce back out here. NWA Recovery, how are you guys? Good to see you. Those are our neighbors. Now you're getting ready to see somebody. I don't know who this guy is. I don't know who that guy is right there. So we're going to go infrared. And we are in white hot. As you can see, my balding head, very, very warm in comparison to, say, the gutter there on the left-hand side. So we are now in infrared. This is a 640 by 512, 30 hertz thermal sensor. It is not a FLIR core, but it is 640 by 512. It is thermal, it is 30 hertz, and it is radiometric. Now, in order to analyze these photos, if I wanted to take a photo right now, for example, uh, radiometric JPEG, radiometric JPG, and analyze that, you do have to use DJI's thermal analysis tool. These images will not work in FLIR tools, uh, but it, because it is a radiometric image, you will be able to analyze those tools with DJI. Who's this guy right here? We got somebody next to us. Tell you what, I don't know who this guy is. Let's just say, let's say that I know who this guy is. You'll see the crosshairs on me, but I don't know who the guy is next to me. We'll be able to flip right back over to Zoom. Nope, he's trying to get away. So now we're back on our Zoom camera and we're able to zoom in. Laser rangefinder is active. Brad is approximately five feet above ground level and he's 85 feet away from the drone. You got him. And then we can simply back right back out to IR. Now your zoom camera is still doing its thing, right? So you're able to zoom that zoom camera. If I wanted to set up my scene, I'm on infrared, set up my scene. It's approximately 40X and flip right back over to zoom. There he is. That's me doing that, by the way. I'm going the other way. There he is. He's famous. We're gonna go back to our infrared. Now this is a 640 by 512 camera which means that it does have digital zoom, digital, emphasis on digital, okay? We're gonna go 1X, oh, fat finger, sorry about that, 2X, 4X, and 8X. Now, obviously, this is digital, right? So it's doing a little bit of uh, extrapolation. So there's, for sure there's some algorithms at work that I just can't understand, but it does actually zoom in, and we're back out to 1X. So this is your normal field of view. And you can also do a split screen. So there is no MSX on the H20T. MSX is a proprietary FLIR technology, amazing technology. Brett Randall, if you're watching, we love you guys. Awesome products, but you can do a split screen. So you pull up split and now you've got infrared on your left and you've got uh, your visual spectrum on the right. One awesome thing about the H20T is this field of view is Grant or Francisco, if you're watching and you know better, just tell me, this is almost identical. So you've got a very, very similar field of view between your thermal and your visual. Again, just enhancing that situational awareness. Uh, you might not see the value in that, but some of you that are you know, out there operating on the streets, you understand that having that same perspective, that same field of view across both of your image streams is absolutely critical. We're gonna bounce back over to just IR. And we're gonna go to our color menu here. Now you do have obviously high temp, low temp, you can set your gains, all of that data or your color palettes. If you wanted to invert that and go black hot, absolutely could. You can go iron red. One of my favorites is tint. I don't know why. It's just, it makes it easy to spot the really hot spots there. You can go rainbow too. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I default to white hot. And it's just, that's my tried and true. It's my bread and butter. So there you have it, folks. That's just a real quick live overview, uh, live flight demo, I should say, uh, of the H20T on the M300 RTK. If you guys have any specific questions, any uh, concerns, whatever it might be, uh, please let us know. We do have these in stock. Uh, if those of you guys that tuned in on our first live stream before our technology failed us, you saw the other M300. That guy was getting ready to go out for a test flight. 
uh, to our really, really good friends at Mooresville, North Carolina, town of Mooresville. Jeff, shout out to you, man. We really appreciate you guys. Please stay safe. And uh, we appreciate you guys coming by. You can reach us uh, here on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. You can email us, sales at uvt.us. Call us, 479-595-8010. And if you're on YouTube, i got to say it, smash that subscribe button.